In this video tutorial we will be looking at determining loads on individual beam. A structural element is a portion of a structure that can be usefully considered as a separate entity. At an appropriate time in the design process a slab, a beam, a wall or a column can be visualized as isolated from the rest of the structure and calculations can be performed on that element to determine a suitable choice of size or section. The following examples illustrate the calculation of design loads for beams. Let's we move into our example problem. Timber beams spanning 4 meter and spaced at 3 meter centers, as shown in figure support a timber floor comprising joists and boards with a plaster ceiling. Other design data can be found below. Self-weight of boards and floor joists, self-weight of ceiling, imposed load on floor and self-weight of timber beam are given as design data. A weight for the beam is assumed because at this stage in the design process the size of the beam is not known. You can see figure here. I will explain this figure in next slide. This is the spacing between beams, and this is the beam length. To determine the uniformly distributed load, visualize a single beam removed from the structure. We will consider this middle beam for our calculation. Load of this shaded area will be borne by the beam which we consider. Width of the shaded area is 3 meters and length is 4 meters. So the area of the shaded area is 4 times 3 equals 12. You can see isolated timber floor beam in this slide. This is the beam length. This the UDL. Our ultimate goal is to find this UDL. These all three values are dead loads. That's it I written under dead load column. First load type is joist and boards. This 0.23 is the value of self-weight of boards and floor joists, which is given in the design data. 4 times 3 means the area of the shaded area. Once we multiply these three values, we can get 2.76 kN. Second load type is ceiling. This 0.22 is the value of self-weight of ceiling which is given in the design data. Again, 4 times 3 means the area of the shaded area. Once we multiply these three values, we can get 2.64 kN. Third load type is timber beam. This is the self-weight of the timber beam. 0.6 kN is given in the design data as an assumed data. Next, we have to find imposed load. This 1.5 is the value of imposed load on floor, which is given in the design data. This is the shaded area. Once we multiply these three values, we can get 18 kN. Now we can find total dead and imposed loads. Get the sum of these three values. We can get total dead load as 6 kN. Since we have only one imposed load, total imposed load will be 18 kN. Now we can find the design load. There are two types of loads, which are load for serviceability limit state and load for ultimate limit state. By substituting total dead and imposed loads to these equations, we can easily find the loads for serviceability and ultimate limit states as shown in the slide. It is a simple substitution and simple mathematics. So these are total loads which means they are like point loads. We need to find distributed loads. For that, we have to divide these values by the beam length. So this is the final answer.
Thank you. I hope you learned the lesson. If you have a question, please feel free to write it in the comment area. If this tutorial helps to your studies, please hit a like and subscribe us. See you soon in another lesson.